To make my drawstring bag, I need to first decide how big I want it to be. I've decided on 250 millimeters wide and 320 millimeters tall. To that, I need to add my seam allowance on one side and also a bit at the top for turning it over to put the drawstring in. So I'm going to measure out my 250 wide, first of all, using my ruler and 250 is down here. And then I'm going to measure my height at 320 millimeters. Now my ruler's not long enough, so I need to measure the 20 first, and then I can add 300 millimeters on the end. From there, I can work outwards, 250 millimeters, brings me to here, and I can draw a line for that and I can work downwards to give me 320 millimetres. That's the size I want my drawstring bag to be. Now I've got to add on those extra bits for seam allowance and also for the bit at the top. So I'm going to add on 70 millimetres, which is here and I'm going to add on 30 millimetres at the bottom, which is down here. Now the easiest way of doing this is to work up again and add on 30 millimetres at the top and add on 70 millimetres at the top, make a mark, and then we can draw those parts in. So across the top and down the side There we go, there we go. So that gives us our seam allowance down the side and enough at the top to turn over. Okay, our next step then is to use a pair of paper scissors and we cut that out. And there we go, that's our paper template sorted. The next stage of our drawstring bag is to pin the template or pattern onto our fabric. Now I've got a piece of fabric here and I'm going to take my pattern and lay it on top. Now we need a front and a back, so I'm putting two layers together and I'm going to pin my pattern against the fold in the fabric. We don't pin our paper templates in the middle of the fabric because that's wasteful. So we take our pins and we pin them through the pattern and underneath.
So there we go. The paper pattern is now pinned onto the fabric, ready for us to cut out. So we'll need a pair of fabric scissors. And we take our fabric scissors and we cut along the sides of the paper template. And there we go. We've got two layers of fabric and one paper template. We can now remove all the pins from the paper pattern and move on to sewing. The next stage is to mark out and fold in the corners where the drawstring is going to go through. And we do this because it protects the edge where there's lots of pulling and pushing with the drawstring. So I've removed the paper pattern. I can now unfold my fabric, which gives me the inside of the fabric. And what I'm going to do is use tailor's chalk and a ruler to mark where those edges are going to come in. So the first inside part is marked at 20 millimeters in and 70 millimeters down. And what we do then is to tuck in that edge and pin it ready for sewing. So we fold those corners in, 20 millimetres in, 70 millimetres down. Now it's quite fiddly and all we're folding over is a little triangle. We do the same on the other side. So we mark 20 millimetres in and 70 millimetres down. And we then tuck that edge in and then we put a pin in to hold that nice and steady. Just like that. Before we can do any sewing, we need to set up the sewing machine and thread it. So I take my thread through the top guide, down, around following the arrow, through the take-up lever, through the hook there, through the hook there, and then finally through the sewing machine needle itself. We pass that thread under the presser foot and to the back. Your teacher will show you how to do this separately and sign your sewing machine license. We need to put the bobbin in and again we follow the instructions shown on the plate there. Take our bobbin and we bring it through the hook and to the back and put the plate through. We will then take the top thread that comes through the needle and we'll take our hand wheel on the side of the machine and wind it towards us and that brings up the bottom thread. There, the bottom thread has come up. We pass them both under the presser foot and we're now ready to sew. Here we now have our piece of fabric and I've turned in the corners in a previous video and put one pin in. So what we're going to do is to bring our folded in corner under the presser foot 
and we're going to line up the right hand edge of that presser foot with the edge of our fabric. I'm going to lower the presser foot down and at this point we could probably remove the pin so that we don't end up going over it. Okay, so I'm going to turn the sewing machine on and I'm going to hold down the reverse lever and I'm going to gently reverse backwards to the edge of the fabric. Then what I can do is gently come forwards, following the edge of the presser foot, keeping my fingers back out of the way of the pin, and there we go. And I'm going to just do a reverse back over that edge, which stops it becoming unravelled. Okay. On these machines you turn the hand wheel again towards you, and that lifts the needle out. We're looking for the take-up lever to come all the way to the top before we try and remove our fabric. Then, using our scissors, we can cut off the loose end. We can tidy those up in a bit. And we're going to start again. On this side, again, watching for the side of the presser foot. So I can put it under the presser foot, lower it down. At this point, we can take the pin out. Gently reversing back the edge, coming forwards, and then reversing back to seal that stitch. Okay, taking the hand wheel, bringing it up so that the take-up lever is all the way at the top, and then we can remove our fabric. The next step is to do a seam on the top that's tucked over for added strength. So I'm going to use the iron at this point and it's set on number one, we don't want it too hot, and I'm going to iron over the top edge about 10 millimetres. gives us a nice crisp edge which we can stitch again on the sewing machine. We're back on the sewing machine again and we're going to sew that top edge. So we press, press our top edge under the presser foot and it, once again I'm lining up with the top edge, the right hand side of my presser foot. I'm coming in slightly from the end because I want to start in reverse. So we bring the presser foot down, holding the reverse lever and Back we go. Once we get to the end, it's time to start coming forwards. Nice and gently and carefully, guiding our fabric nice and straight under the presser foot. We're now coming up to the end and we will need to reverse back over the end to seal that stitching. And into reverse. We bring the hand wheel towards us and up it comes there. We're back at the iron again, and I want to fold up this top piece to make a casing that our drawstring will go through. Now, I'm going to be using some ribbon for my drawstring, so I need enough space to be able to get that through. So I'm folding over 30 millimetres of the top fabric. 
and we're folding this onto the inside of our bag so this is the wrong side that we're looking at here the folded over piece we're seeing the right side showing through this fabric doesn't show it particularly well it's a similar pattern on both sides so 30 millimeters from the top I've measured in I'm now ready to start ironing There we go. We now have a nicely folded over top part to our bag. The top casing is now ready to be sewn. The casing is the part where the drawstring threads through. What I'm going to do here is put this under the presser foot, but I'm using the inside edge of the presser foot to give me a guide. So I'm going to lower the presser foot down as we normally do. I'm going to straighten my fabric and then start in reverse. Once we get to the end, we can then go forwards, taking care to watch the inside edge of the presser foot on the edge of our fabric. That gives us a nice straight line to match the other one. Okay, we're slowing down towards the end. And then we reverse backwards to seal that stitching. Bringing the take up lever, lever up to the top, bringing the presser foot up, and then we can trim those threads. So what we should have now is a nice casing that we can put our ribbon into when we're ready. To make the top drawstring we also need to know how much fabric. Now I've got my fabric laid out here from the ironing that I've just done and I need the drawstring to be at least the same length plus a bit more. So I'm going to add on about a hand width each side, maybe a bit more so that we can see that once it's pulled around into a circle we've got plenty to grab hold of as a handle. So I'm going to cut my ribbon about here and the next stage is to take that ribbon and iron it ready to be turned into a much narrower ribbon which would be much stronger. That's done in two stages. So the first stage is to take our ribbon and fold it in half and we're going to just iron that ribbon in half to give us a nice crisp line moving along a little bit at a time There we go. So we should have a nice crisp line down the centre of our ribbon. And what we do now is we fold the edge into that centre line. A little bit at a time. This is quite tricky to get accurate. We fold the edge into the centre again. And we will do that for all of the sides.
So finally, what we should be able to do is to take our ribbon and fold both sides in half and then half again and that gives us a nice ribbon there. We could put pins along the side ready for sewing. I'm now ready to sew my handle. Now we've ironed this previously, we've got a closed end, that first fold that we did, and an open end. I've pinned these so that it won't fall apart as I'm sewing. I've also tucked in the ends, which is quite a tricky thing to do, but it gives us a much neater finish. So I folded those over and I quickly ironed them. I'm going to move the pin down so that we can start off under the presser foot. So we're going to follow again the inside edge of the presser foot here. So I'm going to lower that down. And I can now remove the pin so that the machine doesn't sew over the top of it. OK, so once again, starting in reverse. And then we're ready to move forwards. Now it is possible to use a range of decorative stitches on this. I'm going to keep this as straight stitches so that it's uh, quicker, but we can use the zigzags and the various other patterns that are available on our machines. So moving forwards. And once again, I'm following this edge and the inside edge of my presser foot. And at the end we finish in reverse as usual. The hand wheel comes towards us until the take lever is brought up and then we can cut our threads. There. That gives us our ribbon as a drawstring that will be threaded through the bag later once we've done some of the other jobs. I've just got my motif back from the laser cutter. There are a few things that have just broken through. So uh, rather than just stitching around the edge, I think it would be too fragile to do that. So I'm going to fix this on with something called Bonder Web. It's this stuff. It's a heat sensitive adhesive. And what we can do is lay that between the two bits of fabric and that will join the two parts together. So we'll need to use an iron. The iron in this case is on a number three, which is very hot, and we don't want to use that on the ribbon. So if we need to iron some ribbon later, we'll need to make sure it's cooled down. So we put that on there. We don't want to get any of the bonder web on the bottom of the iron, so we cover with a siliconized paper. So going over the top, a uh, reasonable amount of pressure, and we want to warm that so that the on the web actually melts between the two bits of fabric. Take care particularly of the corners, uh, they, they're probably the bits that will peel the most, and also the fragile detail. We want to make sure they're well bonded on. Okay, 
There we have a motif fixed on. I might run a line of stitching around the edge just to make sure that's really secure, but the bonder web should hold that nicely. We're now at the point where I can start to sew around the edge of my motif. I'm going to use a zigzag stitch. I'm set with zigzag here. I'm set with a stitch length of two and a stitch width of three. I'm going to line up the outside edge of my motif with the inside edge of the presser foot. So if I lower that down, I'm now ready to start off in reverse. And then when I get to the corner, I can come forwards again. Okay, we're now at that corner. We leave the needle in the machine, raise the presser foot and come around, lower it down and we're ready to carry on. And there we have it, the motif just stitched on with a zigzag stitch. We're now at the last stages of putting our fabric together. So we've got our motif sewn on the outside of the fabric. We've got our casing on the inside of the fabric. We now turn the whole thing inside out and that way we can see where we need to sew around the edge. Now I'm going to pin this and then we can do some nice straight stitching. So pinning from the outside edge inwards. So my fabric is now pinned on the edge. What I want to do is to then start under my presser foot and I'm going to use the 15mm line on the edge of the sewing machine. So it's a little bit outside of the edge of the presser foot. I'm going to lower the presser foot down and remove that pin. And as before we start off in reverse but we don't go all the way to the end. We go up to our casing and just a little bit further there. So in line with the row of stitching that we've already done. Now I can come forwards. So I'm steadily watching the 15 millimeter marker on the stitch plate. I'm going to remove the pin before it goes under the machine. Now we need to make sure we stop 15 millimeters before the end, which is about the thickness or width of a fingertip. And we leave the needle in the fabric as we turn the corner.
Right, we reverse back to seal the stitching. Okay, turning the hand wheel so that the lever arm is all the way at the top and then we can take our fabric out. The stitching that we've just done leaves quite a raw edge. So we've moved to a different machine, it's called an overlocker, and your teacher will use this for you. It's got a, a number of moving needles and some cutting blades. And what it will do is it will cut the edge of the fabric off and stitch over the edge to give a nice cleanly finished professional look. There we go, an overlocked edge is a lot neater. Our final task is to put in the drawstring. So I'm using a bent piece of wire here and I'm going to hook the drawstring into the end to make sure it doesn't fall out. And then I'm going to thread this through the top of the drawstring bag. Now this is quite fiddly, it's a matter of pushing forwards and pulling backwards. And there we have the other end coming out now. So we'll unhook the piece of wire and we'll pull that through neatly and then turn the bag inside out. Pushing out the corners. We have our drawstring bag. We could stitch the top two ends together on the drawstring to make sure that they don't pull back inside the bag. And that's a fairly simple job just to go backwards and forwards with a straight stitch there. It's then possible if you wanted to add some extra things. It might be that a, a little loop of fabric inside would be useful to um, put your house keys on. Um, maybe you want to try thinking about other handles and there are loads of other things that can be done to change the design of this bag. But there we go, one drawstring bag.